for my admission 5th of May 2023 to start oh my September 2023. And everything in this life all depends on perception, mindset. Before now, I had the mindset that, oh, I can't do this program till 2024 or 2025 until I met at the Kemi Solar. But those we left in Nigeria are growing. You realize that there are some bits you left in Nigeria, some of them have opened their pharmacies. Those that you left in also to practice have become a step ahead. You don't want to go back and you have to literally start from scratch again. You should have developed yourself in your career path such that when you are going back, you are of higher value than you left. Welcome back to my channel. So this is a continuation of my interview with pharmacist Adekemi Sola. In this particular video, we're going to be giving you updates about OSPAP program. So for people who don't know what OSPAP is, OSPAP is a conversion program for overseas trained pharmacists who have moved to the UK and who are trying to in a transition into the pharmacy practice in the UK. So for you to work or for you to become licensed in the UK as a pharmacist, you need to first go through this OSPAP program. It's a one-year program, and we've got only four universities in the UK offering this OSPAP program. And the school fee is quite pricey, about £11,000 to maybe seventeen up to up to 17000 pounds actually. And it's just for one year, you either do one year MSc or nine months PG diploma. Two things that have been discouraging a lot of foreign trained pharmacists from doing this OSPAP is number one is the fact that there are only four universities doing this program, of which each university has a particular number of applicants that they can admit into the school every year. And as it is now, there is a backlog of applicants that the school cannot even contain so till like 2025 most universities or let me just say four all those four universities don't even have any space for any applicant that's going to be applying now however i made a video on my other channel about my discovery at um university of sunderland on their website i found an expression of interest form and i'll refer you to that video to check out that video to learn more about the expression of interest form. Another limiting factor is the funding aspect. You know, for, for you to even come to the UK, it must have cost you a fortune. Now talking about getting admission and then paying your school fees of £11,000 up to £17,000 is not small money. So that's another factor that is limiting a lot of people from attempting to do OSPA. But in this video, we are going to be hearing from a Nigerian trained pharmacist who moved to the UK in 2021 and in 2022 she got a space to do her OSPA program at the University of Hertfordshire and come September she's going to be resuming for her OSPA program at the University of Hertfordshire so we want to know how she was able to do it how did she do it how and it came it's all like you're welcome back on our hot seats <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you once again. Thank you for the other session. Guys, if you are yet to see the video we made about getting a pharmacy dispenser job in the UK, mm, what are you waiting for? Rush down, rush down. Go and check out that video. It is fully packed with insights, with knowledge. Yes, so, people <laughs> so please uh, ask us how it happened. When and how? Hmm. 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 Anyways, thank you for having me. So where do I start? First of all, then what I want to first um change our minds on what is on the GPHC website, which says, oh, is oversubscribed, you might not get, and all of those things. Yes, those sentences are true, but at this time you have to be willing to uh, take a chance. Personally, for me, I already told myself that if my letter expires in two years, luckily enough, even though that expired their letters expired last year. They've extended it by one year. So in a way, quote unquote, the letter is now three years. Yes, wow. That's good news. They've not said it, but those that of last year have added one extra year. So if they can do that for those in the past, the likelihood of them doing it again is high. But I really told myself if the worst will come to us, we'll also another 687 pounds. 
I will do it again if it had expired. So because the fact remains that pharmacists are still in shortage. Yes. In the UK. The UK is still in shortage of pharmacists. I think yes. that's why they and the University of Kingston that previously stopped because of reduced students is already in the process of starting again. Because what mm -hmm. made them stop was they didn't have enough people that were applying. But now that it's oversubscribed, they are in the process of getting renewed. And even a lot of schools are increasing their numbers. Acting has gone from 35 to 75. Air Force share has gone from 50 to 60, which is wow. where I got lucky to get in. So, uh, where do I start from? I feel like everybody already knows the process of how to get a GPH decision letter. That's not you. <laughs> so, okay, so the GPH decision letter, the first step is doing your IELTS, getting seven across board. I was lucky to just do it one time and pass it one time. Not everybody has that luxury, is what I would say. So, which is why it's advisable to just start as soon as possible. You never can tell if you're not be a one time thing. So, I wrote my IELTS in june of 2022 that's last year and then a year I, now year ago yes a year ago i mean june 25 that's from the year yeah, june 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. almost exactly a year ago today exactly is year. and then as at that time gpc was not collecting any new applications they said that it was till october so i waited in october but during that period of time what i did was do my narrowing i um told my university lecturer that oh ma i'll be needing letter from you i told my um boss in nigeria i'll be needing letter from you once it's close to october because the thing is all these letters have a three months validation and the problem with those letters is if you send one let's say you send one maybe your letter of good standing and you're still waiting for the one from school and you're unlucky that the letter of good standing enters three months before that one comes they will take the same letter of good standing again that's hundred thousand wasted Yes, so I had to like I informed them in advance. Okay, and what I did was I knew that letter of good standing was the only one I didn't have a power over. I can't control when it would get there. The other ones, in a way, you can control when it would get there. So I made sure my letter of good standing was the first to go, and then call other people. Another thing that happened for me was my Nigerian boss sent his um. What's that thing? Reference letter via his email address, and they said his email address is for your employer. Is one employer. of the correct that my his email address is not experience as a pharmacist. No, you, you, need to have worked, you need to have worked six months in two years, a minimum of six months in the space of two years as a pharmacist. Okay. When he sends the first email, my employer for my Nigerian employer, when he sends the first email, they told me that um what's the word that it was a private email because they need individual um institutionalized email address which most nigerian employers don't have the one that has at um like at unilag or at the company the company because i'm because another thing is my uk employer to have to send because if you're working in the uk as a pharmacy as a pharmacy anything your uk employer to send a letter of reference okay me and i now asked my boss in nigeria Actually, I think they need three reference letters. If you need to know the procedure for this GPHC adjudication, I made an explicit video yeah. on my other channel. You can just go there. You need three referees, actually, three references. One academic, one could be... No, you need two if you are in, in Nigeria. But if you are already here and working in a pharmacy setting, it's three. Okay. So, yes, so I got all of that, and then got my GPHC letter in December. As about December... The news was that all the schools are filled up. So my mind was, I'm going to start school in 2024. Like I said earlier, many of the schools added, went to the GPHC to get new added people. So Aston was accredited for 35 more people. Well, Aston did not open it up. What Aston just did was they picked those that had submitted before and then put them through. What Air Force Air did then was saying, bring out expression of interest. So they, that was in March. And then people brought an expression of interest. Thank God I had done my GPS letter. Because as I then, one, the first thing that I used to cancel out people was anybody without GPS letter is automatically disqualified from the list. Because there was a form they sent in. So the first question is, do you have a GPS letter? 
If you say no, immediately we just tell you, unfortunately, you cannot go further. If you say yes, they will ask you for your GPAC number. They will, so that was the first step of getting of um, the getting the interviews. So for after then, we now did interviews. And I feel like when they said interviews, I thought it was just we're coming to come and gist. We did calculations, we did clinical questions, and then we did interviews about like your experience and your educational experience. Virtual, right? Virtual, yes. And we asked to win calculators. So they, we did a lot of 5% of this in this, convert C1 V1 kind of things. And then they picked 10 of us out of like 50 something people. Wow. Well, the thing is, most of us have a WhatsApp group. And the first thing they sent out was, and that's the thing about you, yeah, they always know if, you are, if it's an unfortunate thing. They first sent out, unfortunately, emails. So as we were all there in the WhatsApp group, we knew what was happening before they started sending out the fortunately interviews. From, we're not sure, but from our conversations with each other on the group, we think they use the calculation to determine those they picked. We are not, we're just guessing, because most people that were picked were either those that got all the five correctly or those that got four out of five. Of their calculation so you were asked five calculation questions yes and the clinical questions were very like you know anything i personally was everybody was asked different questions i was asked what is pharmacokinetics i was asked what is um, what class of medication is the glucine i was asked what does um narrow the pickets index mean i was asked what are the side effects of the glucine and one other question told me the oh, meaning of INR. I know that people told me they asked them what um, what is the antidote for paracetamol pain? What is what class of drug is met for me? What are the side effects? So that was majorly what they asked, like clinical questions, and then the life um, your experiences. Just how to tell them that going to be of value to them in the UK. So you got your admission in December. 2022. No, I got my GPHC letter in December 2020. So I started my GPHC process in October. You know, it takes eight weeks. No, I did my IELTS in June. June. Started submitting my the GPHC was closed over till October. Started submitting my letter, my my papers to GPHC in October. By the time I was later done, like ending of October, I got my GPHC decision letter at December ending. Did my um expression of interest to Ed for share in march did march, my, march 2023 yes March 2023 yes and they did my interview in april april 21 precisely 2023 just two months ago from my admission 5th of may 2023 to start oh my God. September 2023. wonderful wonderful this is wonderful so guys <laughs> never give up like there's there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and everything in this life all depends on perception mindset before now i had the mindset that oh i can't do this program till 2024 or 2025 until i met at the chemisola and she changed my orientation so it simply means that nothing is actually impossible yeah yeah I'm not, I'm and I feel like one thing you should also do is, even though they said all these things, you can send a mail to all the schools. They are just four. Send a mail to all the schools to see if they have spaces. Check their website regularly. For instance, even the expression of interest that we did, that when it's brought out new 10 people to do, what I was looking for was I was part of a Telegram group. But people would, were there that were always going to the going to their website because it was on their website. But what was the likelihood that you would just go to their website every single day? Even last year when Brighton came out, Brighton admission, Brighton application opened for only like three hours. Mm -hmm. What was the likelihood of you seeing their website? Within three hours. Three hours. See, Aston University opened for three days, but they picked those they wanted to pick in literally the first first three or four hours because one of my friends that applied to Aston, she applied on the first day the thing came out she sent them a mail and they sent her a mail back telling her that 119 people applied on the first day so that means it's a thing of fastest finger first even at first year, after we did our expression of interest they sent us a mail telling us that so so did they're going to send us something and it's fast 
first come first time. That day, I turned off the notification of everything on my phone, apart from my email address. Email. So the moment he entered, I had it and I submitted immediately. So it was also first come first serve, and it closed in like four hours too. So. so you need to be to be very alert and have all the informations you need. Which is I was I think I was telling you about a Telegram group to join, which is where I got most of my information from. And uh, please, can you tell us what that Telegram group is for as many people that want to join also? Okay, so even Telegram me, I want to join. Ospap slash pre reg prep 2023 slash 2024. So that's the okay. So telegram group where you would get information. People would say, Oh, Brighton has opened up. Oh, especially has opened up. Oh, this has opened up. So that you can just, you know, get it. I wouldn't know if kitchen starts next year. Another thing can still open up again this year. Yes. They get it for this year. Because yeah. they started working towards getting accredited for it. Mm, and that would be good news, in fact. Yeah. It's already good news. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Adikemi. Um, my next question is, we all know that you are a pharmacy dispenser in the UK, and we have an idea of how much pharmacy dispensers earn. So, this must have come, like, uh, as a surprise because obviously in October you were already thinking that you wouldn't be able to do the to enroll for the OSPAP till probably 2024. So how much is the school fees first? And I know part of the limiting factors for many overseas trained pharmacists is the funding. Did you keep some money somewhere for OSPAP? Please but just let us a lot of people come to the UK with the mindset of oh ah. I don't want to associate with Nigerians anymore who are now with their broad, this and that. And I feel like different strokes for different folks. But for me, luckily for us, where I am, we have like a strong Nigerian community. So people do what we call a jaw. Is that what they call it? Constitution. <laughs> So I, that, that literally was something I was already, I was doing it, not just for other things of life. It, could, I could, it may not have been for us, it might be for something else. It might have been, maybe we would have gotten a car or gotten, just to, okay. save, to, to get the saving mentality. And that was, that was what I used for my initial deposits. Just listen to that. Because the total <laughs> money is about 13,000 something. And I used that for the initial deposits. In pounds. In pounds. So another one will come. And the thing about it is that if you put your mindset that you pay it, you pay it. A lot of people came to this country as students, not even for us, pap. other courses, had no other jobs they were doing, literally emptied their accounts to come. And the only money they had was the initial deposit they paid and still paid their school fees. Mm -hmm. So it's all about um, uh, most of all, having the mindset that you would do it and luckily for us many of these uk universities have very very flexible payment plans some universities do it as small as even one thousand pounds every month so it's not always a thing of oh people say oh i have to get 30 million yes it's i have people i've spoken to that are currently doing it that paid all of their money before coming to to the uk if you can do it it's the best actually because you have to focus fully on the the school because OSPAP, according to what I heard, is very, very, very intense. Lucky you if you are not if you are a coupled up person. So at least if you are facing the school, your other partner will be running the race. People don't feel OSPAP. Mm. It's a mindset too. Is it mindset? Mind Success is actually when opportunity meets preparation, and the preparation part is getting your GPHC letter so if you are in nigeria or you are already in the uk and you're postponing it or you don't even know how to go about the gpht adjudication you can check out my other channel i've got many videos about OSPAP adjudication everything you need is step by step i made my research the step by step process and then start now take action now don't wait till you have all the money don't wait till the admission comes and so even if you get the letter and, even somebody, and the good thing about even the GPHC people is that any question you have, you can send them an email. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So my last question now, my own last words is for foreign trained pharmacists who move to the UK and with the mindset of just want to make money. 
I don't give a damn about career. Please, I've, I've abandoned that um, OSPAP mission. I just want to do care, do any kind of jamma jamma, just make money. The issue is we are not getting any younger. And with time, all the energy, all the vigor would reduce. We won't be able to do as much as we are doing now. And in this UK, if you stop working, there's no how your money keeps increasing, especially if you don't have any investment. So at the end of the day, as time goes on, you can't do as much as you used to, and you can't earn as much as you used to. Assuming you are two friends, the other person has continued to do care, the other person is trying to pursue a career in pharmacy. Over time, that person actually gains admission, finishes, becomes licensed to practice in the UK. You are still there with many jobs. And this person has moved ahead. He's now earning 80 pounds and is progressing career-wise. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, you're burying your head in shame. Don't let me say in shame. There are, other, I think, there are other things, actually. There are other things you can do. But don't limit yourself to, let's say, menial jobs. Yeah. For sure. I don't, that, okay, I just want to add what you are saying, that... And even if you want to stay, because there, there again, some people want to change careers. And even if you want to stay in any career, look for a way to grow in that career. If it's care you want to stay in, look for how to do maybe a master's in nursing mm -hmm. or a master's in mental health something so that in that career you decided to stay in, there is a growth. Because it's an investment for, for pharmacists now. Once you are done with your period, the average entry level salary is 40k per annum. And this is for basic salary for minus all the other locals, locums that you can do, and even growing, becoming an independent prescriber. Once you become an independent prescriber, it's average of about 50k per annum. So there's, and that is just your starting. So it's an investment to do. We want to jack her. But we should also think about the fact that, let's say today, the Nigeria that we left behind because one of the best countries in the world and you want to go back. You want Jack to back. go back with some Jack 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 Jack. Jack. You have to go back. You want to go back that your value when you left is less than your value now that you are coming back. Because the truth is that the bad, the bad, the bad, those we left in Nigeria are growing. You realize that there are some bits you left in Nigeria, some of them have opened their pharmacies. Those that you left in hospital practice have become a step ahead. You don't want to go back and you have to literally start from scratch again. You should have developed yourself in your career path such that when you are going back, you are of higher value than you left. Thank you so much. So, guys, if you are yet to like this video, please do well to like this video, but don't just like share this video out. I just have that conviction in me that this video is not an ordinary video.